When I moved to Utah in 1997, uh, we were driving along Harrison Boulevard and saw this building and absolutely fell in love and decided that one day I was going to own this building and this darling little bookstore that had been here for so many years. I approached the owner of the store uh, if she would be willing to uh, let us move into the bookstore. We were in the coffee business at the time and we owned a very successful little coffee shop down in Leighton. Um, but we decided we would like to come up here into Ogden. Um, at that time she was kind of resistant to the whole idea and so we approached her several years later and in 2005 she actually agreed to let us put a little coffee shop inside the bookstore and that kind of gave us our foot in the door and learned a lot about the bookstore business at that time um, and it was all over but the crying after that because in 2008 we bought the whole thing the building the bookstore and everything so it was uh, it was just a series of events that uh, that occurred that were very fortunate for us this store was completely wall-to-wall -wall, floor to ceiling aisles and aisles of books everywhere you looked there were shelves of books um, obviously it's very different today and that came about as you know, a series of um, things that happened with the economy, uh, with the advent of ebooks, Amazon.coms and so on and so forth. People didn't have quite as much money to spend on their books and so we had to seriously, seriously think about how we were going to go forward with Wisebird Bookery. Um, the bookstore has been here since 1978 and was started by two delightful ladies that were school teachers in the community. And we really felt that it had been such an important part of the history of this area that we really did not want to close our doors. And we struggled with this for some time uh, and finally looked at each other in the eye and said, you know, what is it that we know best? We knew the coffee business. Um, what is it that we want to do? We want to preserve the bookstore at all costs. And so we decided that we would rearrange things a little bit uh, after we purchased the building, rearrange things a little bit to make it more of a community gathering place. And of course, coffee and books is a perfect combination for that. And so that's what we've done. And over the last several years, we have um, brought it to what you see in here today. There are a lot of people who, you know, are traditionalists and they wanted it left the way that it was. We all have this wonderful um, secret place in our hearts where we think of little old bookstores with their spider webs and their dusty bookshelves and so on and so forth. And wouldn't it be great if we could all exist, you know, w with that dream? Um, it, it's just not, it doesn't happen anymore. So today we still have um, a lot of people that walked through the doors just yesterday. I had a couple come in. They moved to California 28 years ago and they walked back in here and the typical reaction is people stop and they look around and they say, where are all the books? And my usual response to that is, well, welcome to Weisberg Bookery. When was the last time you were here? Because quite obviously, between you and I, they haven't been coming in here buying books, if their reaction is, you know, where are all the books? So they're kind of, well, it's not the little bookstore anymore. No, it isn't. It isn't, sadly. Little bookstores don't exist unless we do something a little bit more um, appealing to, to the community. So this is, this is the niche that we found, and it's working well for us. I had the, the impression that most people were like myself, you know, they would come in and they would look for a book and they would browse the shelves and then they would leave. And, or, you know, they'd buy a book and leave. Um, people would come in with the intention of purchasing a book in the first place. What we're finding now, especially with the advent of um, e-books and um, the big chains, Amazon.com and so on and so forth, a lot of time, and, and I, I totally understandably, um, people come in, they'll look for a book that piques their imagination or whatever, and then they'll say, well, I can get this for $10 less on Amazon.com, and they will turn around and walk away. And that, that was hurtful to me, that people would, um, I guess it's business and you can understand it, um, but it was, it was a surprise to me that 
people would use a local bookstore owner and then turn around and say, well, I can get it cheaper from a big corporation that's not going to put anything back into our local community. We're very involved in buy local first. Um, because the money that we pay in taxes, the money that we pay in salaries, goes back into our community. Whereas, I think a lot of people are not really aware of the fact that when you purchase a book online, or when you purchase a book from a big chain store, that money leaves the state. So we do try to educate people from that point of view as well. Basically, I think just purely because we've been so involved in our community, um, we donate to a lot of the local charities, a lot of the local school groups and so on and so forth, that you know, people have realized that you know, we're here to stay and it's, um, it's a, just a wonderful place to come.